You know guys, I've built a lot of gaming PCs on the channel with every possible color scheme I could think of, except one, retro. Specifically, futuristic retro, which has been very popular recently. You know what I'm talking about, those cotton candy cyan and hot pink color scheme we always see on setup boards and even PC builds. It's gotten quite the hype these past several years. In fact, there is even a music genre for retro synthwave that was created in the 2000s to often espouse nostalgia for 1980s culture and celebrate it. I'm actually a huge fan of retro music myself. I'm sure you guys have heard me use a lot of retro music in the past. I thought I could pour some of my passion inside of a PC build. And since I love the color scheme so much, I thought we could do like a cool futuristic retro theme system. And it's been a while since I've done a custom modded system on the channel anyway, so I think now is the time. I also wanna give a huge thanks to Gigabyte and Taiwan Excellence for making this video possible. I don't know if you guys knew this, but the symbol of Taiwan Excellence is the highest recognition given to the very best and most innovative Taiwanese companies and products. They celebrate and promote these companies and products to the world and Gigabyte happens to be one of those companies. More than 150 Gigabyte products have won this prestigious award over the years with four Gigabyte products awarded in 2020 alone. Hence why we are using mostly Gigabyte products for this PC build. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this system is about performance as much as it's about aesthetics. It's about a 50-50 split. This is not a value PC by any means. It's not gonna bring you any bang for the buck. My goal is simply to build a high-end system to max out games in 1440p resolution while having a retro color scheme. So with that said, let's quickly go over the parts, starting with the processor. This is the AMD Ryzen 9 3900. This is the non-X version of the 12 core 24 thread processor, which has a slightly lower base and boost clock, but it doesn't really matter since I'll be overclocking it anyways. Not only is it great for gaming, but it's also perfect for workstation related tasks, whether it's editing videos, streaming games, or any CPU intensive tasks. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be overclocking the CPU to its maximum potential and to achieve such high numbers, I'm gonna need an AIO to get the job done. And since this is an all gigabyte build, I decided to go with the Aura's liquid cooler. One of the things I like about their new cooler is the uh, circular full color LCD, which can be customized to show pictures or harder information, which is pretty cool. The motherboard I'm pairing with the CPU is the X570 Aura's Extreme. This is a good looking 16 power phase board with a buttload of features like triple PCI Gen 4 M.2 slots, built-in Wi-Fi, and it comes included with their RGB fan commander, which supplies eight fan and LED headers. However, I won't be using that since I'll be going with the Lee and Lee Unifans instead. Since we're on the X570 platform, I wanted to take advantage of PCI Gen 4 speeds, so that is why I'm using the Aura's Gen 4 M.2 SSD. With blazing speeds of up to 5,000 megabytes per second read and up to 4,400 megabytes per second write, this is gonna drastically reduce the load times on my applications and games. For memory, we are throwing in 32 gigs of RAM running at 3,600 megahertz. The Aura's RGB memory is gonna fit perfectly with the build with its good looking aluminum heat sinks and perfectly diffused RGB lighting. And since we're using all Aura's products, we're gonna be able to sync all the lighting together easily with the RGB Fusion 2.0 software. Lighting is gonna be just as important if I'm gonna pull off this retro color scheme. Now for the graphics card, I did go with the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Gaming OC to be able to max out games in 1440p resolution. This is the OC edition, which means it comes out of the box with an 1800 MHz core clock, but I will be manually overclocking the graphics card to see how much performance I can squeeze out of it. Powering the build is the Gigabyte 750 GM 80 plus gold certified power supply, which is more than enough for all of these parts, plus any overclocking that I'll be doing to this system. And I like that it's fully modular because I can plug in only the cables I'll need to free up extra space in the case. But you guys know how we do it here on the channel. We never stick with the nasty stock cables. So I went on Amazon and I ordered these awesome looking retro cable extensions. And finally, the case I'll be using is the Gigabyte C200 Glass. I personally like the clean, sleek aesthetic of this tower. It sports a tinted, tempered glass panel on the side and front with a subtle RGB lighting. As clean as this case is, it's gonna need some modding to fit the retro color scheme that I'm going for. And I'm sure you guys have guessed at this point, we're gonna be using these vinyl to wrap some parts of the case. And I do have some mods actually coming in later today. Oh man, I'm so excited to finally start doing these 
modded PC build. It's been a while, you guys. But anyways, with that said, let's begin. All right, guys, we're gonna start off with the big boy motherboard, the X570 Aura's Extreme. Let's get you out of this bag. It's always hard filming with one hand and unboxing the other, but this thing is actually looking a lot bigger than I imagined. Cheese and rice. I actually don't think... Is this gonna fit inside the case? Hold up. I just took Gigabyte's word for it. I didn't even check compatibility. We have uh, an extended motherboard going inside a small mid-tower case. Oh, no siree, that is not gonna work indeed. It is covering up the cutouts. That is not gonna look good, unfortunately. Oh man, I really wanted to use this board. Yeah, see, it's, it's covering up those, um, those three cutouts and half of the other cutouts on the side there. So there's literally no space to run the cable. So we cannot use this board. All right, so we're gonna have to put you back and we'll use you for a different build, don't you worry. Put you back on the bottom and see what other board we can use. Uh, we do have three of these. Actually, I think this will be perfect. The uh, Ores B550 Elite. I think this is gonna be much better. Let's just do a quick confirmation. Oh yeah, much better. It is not covering any of these cutouts. Um, so I think we're gonna be good to go with this board. Let's go ahead and get the motherboard naked by pulling off the protection. All right, let's pop in the processor. We're not gonna need the cooler, so let's put this aside. Oh, Jesus Christ, this is not gonna go well. You know what, this is actually a challenge, you guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build this entire PC with one hand. Let's see how far I can get before I give up. Pull the lever, match the triangles on the CPU and the sockets, gently lay it down, close the lever, boom, step one is done. We are using all four sticks, so total 32 gigs, we're going to occupy all four of the dim slots. Let's lower down the tabs, wrong side. That's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is install the M.2 SSD in here. And guys, I'm super excited to finally use my electric toothbrush for the first time that I opened up on the last unboxing video. This is gonna be so cool. So let's get the M.2 on here. Oh yeah, look at that. So much rose gold. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be using the heat sink because it doesn't really match the, uh, the retro color scheme. So I'm gonna take this apart real quick. Oh, it's magnetic too, I didn't even know that. Oh my God, I'm in love with this screwdriver. And that is it, three parts already installed. All right, so before I install the motherboard inside the case, I want to do the most difficult mod first and get that out of the way because there's gonna be some drilling required. And I don't want any of the shavings to come in contact with the board, potentially damaging the components. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna remove the power supply shroud so that I can skin it. And we do have some vinyl wrap over here. I'm gonna try and figure out which one of these matches the cables the best. So I got some Custom cables. Well, not really custom actually. These are pre-built from Amazon. And let's see which of these matches the cables first. Let's start off with the pink. I don't know what it is with this color, which is the hot pink, but it stands out so much compared to the other pink. Like this is in your face. But unfortunately, it doesn't really match the pink on the cable. So let's put that aside. 
and then we have more of a flat pink that doesn't work i think yeah this is it we have a winner the closest i know it doesn't really show up that great on camera but in person this is practically identical so let's go with this one for the pink and then let's try the blues so this one is too pale this one is a completely different shade ding 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 we got a winner what kind of blue is this sky blue all right so we got sky blue and whatever pink this is so i can't use one single color for the power supply shroud otherwise it's going to be too much of that same color and it's not going to balance with the rest of the retro color so if i just do pink the power supply shroud is going to be too pink and then vice versa so i decided to kind of do a diagonal skin in the middle like one side will be pink and then one side will be blue. I think that will look a lot better. All right, guys, now it's time for the most difficult part of this build, getting the power supply shroud out so that I can properly skin it. And the only way I can do that is by removing these rivet pins that are installed by the manufacturer. I'm sure you guys have probably seen this before on the Broly build where I did the exact same thing and I skinned the power supply shroud in white. That's exactly what I'm gonna be doing this time. There are two ways you can remove these rivet pins. Uh, the first way is by using a chisel and by breaking the head and then pushing the pin right through and then method number two is by drilling right through the rivet which is what i'm going to be doing all right so the first step is to figure out where all the uh, rivet pins are located on the case all right so we got three in the back over here one two three we got three on the side one two and three all right so the next step is to find the perfect drill bits uh, it cannot be bigger than the actual rivet itself because we're gonna have to drill through the case essentially pushing out the rivet so I think this over here is the perfect size now we're just going to drill right through the case and there it is the broken rivet Success, ladies and gentlemen, we got the power supply shroud finally out of that tiny case. It was such a difficult process because of how narrow uh, the case is. It didn't, it didn't have much wiggle room for me to move around the power supply shroud. So, you know, five minutes of struggling, but I managed to do it anyways. There is a small little scratch. A lot of you guys can see that near the top, which isn't a big deal since I'll be skinning the entire thing anyways. So I'm just happy I got this thing out. So here it is ladies and gentlemen the final product of the power supply shroud oh my god that looks so damn clean uh, i decided to change it up last second as you guys can see the pink is actually 
has a glossy uh, finish, whereas the sky blue is matte, just to spice it up. You know, I thought I would add one gloss and one matte just to mix it up a bit, and it's actually going to match the cables so much better. Look at this. Oh, perfect, spot on on the blue. The pink is a slight different shade, but overall with the lighting on and everything, you guys won't be able to tell in the end. But yeah, super, super happy with the way this turned out. Let's go ahead and pop this back inside the cave. All right, so now that the power supply is back inside the case, we're gonna have to secure it. And since we destroyed the previous rivets, we're gonna have to add some new ones. So I went on Amazon and I picked up the 500 piece that comes in various different sizes. And we're gonna use this rivet gun to pop them in place. That's actually gonna be the easiest part of this. The hardest part was removing the rivets and removing the power supply shroud out. So from here, it's pretty much downhill. All right, next thing to do is find the correct size rivet. As you guys can see, they do come in different sizes, some longer and thicker than others, which unfortunately I can't say for myself, but we're gonna be going with the smallest option on here because these holes on the case are actually really tiny. So let's go ahead and align the power supply shroud with the case. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the long end inside the rivet gun and then pop this inside the case. So it sits flush with the case, just like that. And the next thing to do is to essentially cut it. So I'm gonna press down on the lever once. Usually pops the second time. Boom, there you go. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, rivet successfully installed. And now I'm just gonna do the rest for the others. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the power supply shroud fully skinned and installed inside the cage. That is looking super clean. I can only imagine what the build is gonna look like. Oh man, just, I'm getting excited just talking about it. But anyways, let's go ahead and move forward by installing parts inside the case. All right guys, so before I install the motherboard inside the case, I thought it'd be a great time to prep the cooler. Um, I did go with the 240 millimeter AIO last minute just because I didn't want to run into any issues with clearance and also I can swap the, uh, the two original fans with the Lee and Lee fan. So that is why I'm going with the 240 instead of the 360. All right, since we're using an AMD CPU, we're gonna be going with the AM4 bracket. So these are the screws I'll be using. And this is the AM4 mounting bracket. We're also not gonna need the original bracket on the motherboard, so we're gonna go and remove this. Oh, I love the screwdriver so much. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and swap the mounting bracket. So this one by default is Intel. And then I'm gonna pop these little guys on here. All right, the board is now finally ready to go inside the case. All right, so now that the board is inside the case, what I like to do is kind of take a step back and figure out my fan configuration. Obviously I want the best cooling performance for the system, but at the same time, I want it to look aesthetically pleasing. And there are two ways I can mount the IO. Either on the top and use it as exhaust or mount it in the front and use it as intake. So I think in this case, plan intended, I'm gonna be going for both cooling performance and aesthetics. And the best option is to mount the IO on the top and use it as exhaust. I'm also going to add an additional 120 millimeter fan in the back as exhaust and three fans in the front as intake. You guys are not gonna believe this. Uh, I took a quick break and I went to Wiener Schnitzel to grab uh, some food and I saw their new peppermint shake. It's the exact same color scheme. Look at that, what are the odds? This video is not sponsored by Wiener Schnitzel, by the way. I don't know why I'm even pointing this out, but I just thought it was hilarious. 
So one of the things I love about the UniFans is less cable clutter. As you guys can see, there are no cables coming out of these fans. So I can actually hook up up to four fans like this and only have one set of cables coming out of it. Genius. All right, so the AIO is gonna be mounted on the top like this. And I know you guys are wondering why I installed the fans like this with the cable showing up in the front. Well, unfortunately, this little module over here that attaches to the fans was coming in contact with the tubes on this side and was pushing the entire fans to the left. So the holes weren't aligning with the holes on the, on the radiator. So fortunately, this is the only way I could do it, but I do have a little fix for this. I'm gonna be using these tiny little cable clips and attach this to the side and have the cables run through it. So there you go guys, a few cable clips was all it took to route the cables towards the back in a straight clean path. All right, I do want to take this time to install one of the uh, extension cables just because it's going to be really hard to reach that corner over there. So I'm going to be hooking up the 8-pin EPC connector cable on the top there. All right, it's time to install the power supply, but we do have one slight issue, and that is the power supply shroud has a window cut out. So naturally, the power supply or this portion of the power supply is going to be visible which doesn't really contribute to the color scheme. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is skinning at least this portion in the, uh, the blue color. That way it blends in nicely with the, the rest of the theme. So there you have it guys, perfectly skinned power supply, obviously made sure not to make it too long to cover the fan and the connectors over here. So this one was actually precisely measured and I think it turned out pretty good. The beauty about fully modular power supplies is that I can plug in just the cables that I'm going to use. Oh my God, just look at that. I guess looking at it, just look at it. Look how clean that looks. Doesn't even look like there's a power supply in there. Okay, maybe it does, but still. Skinning it in blue was a really good choice. All right, now I'm gonna take this time to install the fans inside the case, starting with the rear fan. Ladies and gentlemen, here is what I have so far of the retro build. Oh my God, it's looking so damn clean. The only thing left to do is pop in the RTX 3080. There she is. So if you guys remember in the unboxing video, I wasn't too thrilled with the design of this card, especially the back plate. It's looking, you know, a bit too bland. So. I hit up the guys at V1 Tech to hook me up with some pretty cool designs. So let me show you the back plate that I'm going to be using. You get that beautiful retro color scheme that's going to fit beautifully 
right on our GPU. But we also got a GPU sag bracket as well. Both of them are gonna be RGB. So this one's gonna essentially sit on the bottom of the GPU. It's gonna look sick once it's all done. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the retro PC build looking pretty good so far. Before I do my first boot test, um, I do want to point out that the colors don't exactly match, right? I mean, the power supply shroud and the cables do somewhat match, but the um, the backplate cover and the GPU sag bracket do not. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do there because these were already pre-configured by V1 Tech. The blue on the backplate is more like a sky blue, whereas we have an ice blue on the PSU shroud. And then we have kind of like a hot pink or more vibrant pink compared to a, uh, a soft pink color. But nonetheless, I think with the lights on, you won't be able to tell the difference as much because it's going to look so mesmerizing. So here we go. Let's boot it up. I hope to God at least all the fans work. Please, please. Yes, I see lights. I see lights. Except the AIO. That's the only one that's not on. All right, so the AIO doesn't seem like it's working. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix the cables in the back, figure out what the issue is, and then change the colors. And I'll be right back with a B. Oh, 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 oh. Spoke too soon. There it is, and it's upside down. I gotta configure that with the software to flip it upside down. But, um,. Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen, there she blows. <laughs> that made no sense. Anyways, the build is done. I also decided to put together a quick little setup with the rest of the uh, Gigabyte gear that was sent to me. We got the Aura's K1 RGB mechanical keyboard with cherry switches. And then we got the Aura's M5 gaming mouse, finishing up with their awesome 34 inch ultra wide monitor. This is the G34WQC. It's a 34 inch curved display with a 144 refresh rate and a one millisecond response time. We're gonna load up some games on there and test this bad boy out. But first, I wanna talk about the system a little bit. Building inside the uh, C200 case was fairly positive for the most part. I wish they added more cable management support in the back of the case. Um, oddly enough, I had to actually install a uh, raceway on one side to kind of hide the cables, but overall, it wasn't a huge deal. There is one more thing I wanna talk about and that is the LCD screen on the AIO. Um, as you guys can see, I did upload my own tech source logo on there. So uploading your own custom image is possible, but it's not as easy as you might think. You have to actually use two separate softwares. You have to use RGB Fusion 2.0 and the Aorus Engine to upload a custom image. Unfortunately, it doesn't support GIF or GIF, however you guys call it but I would love to see a feature like that maybe in the near future. Auras, if you're watching, that'd be pretty cool. But overall, really happy with the uh, the AIO installation uh, for the most part. Um, as far as the tube layout, I did kind of tuck it underneath the screen so it doesn't cover the artwork going up. And I know the logo doesn't really contribute to the color scheme, but I just put something on there to show you guys that it is possible to customize. But yeah, other than that, everything else is pretty much perfect on the build, um, just as I expected. You can't really tell the color difference between the power supply shroud and the back plate once the lights are on. Uh, and the pink on the Lee and Lee fans, you can't really see on camera because it's overexposed. These are some really bright fans, you guys. Like, I have the fans at 25% and it's still being overexposed on my camera. You have to really see this build in person to really appreciate the beauty of it. But anyways, I'm done yapping about it. Let's go ahead and load up a game and test this baby out. The place. This might be a bad idea. Crap! They're closing it all down. I'm in! These 
All right, so temps are looking really good so far. Very stable for the most part. Uh, we got the 3900 hovering under 65 degrees Celsius. It's mostly around 63 to 64. And then the graphics card is peaking at 70 degrees Celsius, it looks like, but it's not budging anything past that. But yeah, pretty healthy numbers so far. And here is what the PC sounds like on full load. You can definitely hear the fans ramping up at full speed, but uh, overall, eh, not, not too loud. And yeah, I think that pretty much does it for this video. Um, once again, I'm absolutely loving the way this turned out. Uh, I think with the tempered glass on it actually looks so much better. And I did forget to mention that I added the, uh, the Fantex neon strip on the top, which really complements the uh, retro futuristic look I was going for. I also like how the front accent color matches the, uh, the neon strip on the top but yeah other than that um let me know what you guys think about this retro build in the comment section down below i'll drop a link to all the parts i used of course and before you go actually i forgot to mention that i'll be giving away an auras b550 elite board they did send me an extra one so this will be given away on my discord server links will be down below if you guys are interested if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more custom modded pc builds like this on the channel then consider dropping a like before you head out. And if you're new here, consider subscribing because I do a bunch of these PC builds on the channel. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.